50 Cent is one of the most savage dudes in the rap game. And today we're breaking down the wild story of how he linked up with El Chapo just to get a stolen G-Unit chain back. In 2004, G-Unit was running the rap game. 50 Cent was one of the biggest artists in the world after dropping Get Richard Die Trying, then G-Unit dropped another classic, Beg For Mercy. Lloyd Banks followed that up with The Hunger For More in May of 04, and Young Buck dropped his first solo album, Straight Outta Cashville, a few months later. The hype for G-Unit was at an all-time high, and they were getting booked for shows all over the country. So, Young Buck and Lloyd Banks decided to hit the road to promote their new albums and had a stop in Chicago. They always traveled with a huge group in case anything happened, but 50 told him not to go out and party while they were in Chicago. He was paranoid that something might happen and didn't want anyone to let their guard down. So, he told the rest of G-Unit to handle their business and go right back to the hotel room after the show. Even though Lloyd Banks and Young Buck both listened to 50, they had a rough time controlling their homies. When they got to Chicago, Banks and Buck did a radio show, and later that night, they had a concert. After the show, they followed 50's orders and went straight back to the hotel room. They were ready to just chill and knock out, but Buck's friend, D. Tay, had different plans. Buck and D. Tay both grew up together in Nashville and were in the streets at a young age. D. Tay even saved Buck's life at one point, and they were still super tight. So when he started touring with G-Unit, Buck brought D. Tay along to be his hype man. D. Tay would sometimes perform with Buck, rocking the iconic G-Unit spinner chain. The spinner chain was a big part of G-Unit's image at the time. It was hand designed by Lloyd Banks with the G-Unit logo in the middle that you could spin like a wheel. No one in hip hop had seen anything like it before, and 50 wore it a lot in early music videos and photo shoots. The spinner chain wasn't just a piece of jewelry. It was a symbol of their success and how far they made it in the rap game. In hip hop, getting your chain snatched means more than just getting robbed. It can challenge your street cred and make fans believe your image isn't real. At the time, G-Unit was seen as the toughest crew in the game, so getting their chain snatched could have ruined their reputation. That's why 50 wanted everyone to stay on point and go home after handling business, but 50 couldn't control everyone, and D. Tay ended up getting the spinner chain snatched off his neck at gunpoint. Even though 50 made the spinner chain famous, Buck wore it the most. But he ended up getting his own chain and passed the G-Unit spinner chain on the D-Tay to wear on stage and hype up the crowd. D-Tay wasn't supposed to wear it when he wasn't on stage, but that didn't stop him that night in Chicago. D-Tay had a friend in Chicago who invited him to go out and see the city. Buck was already back at the hotel with a woman and didn't want to go out, but D-Tay had never been to Chicago and wanted to experience the nightlife. D-Tay wanted everyone to know he was with G-Unit and didn't want to pay to get into the club, so he snuck into Buck's hotel room and grabbed the spinner chain. D-Tay and his homies didn't go to a regular club though. They went to a spot right outside the Cabrini Green Projects, one of the most dangerous hoods in Chicago. By the time the show was over, it was already pretty late. So there was only one spot that was open after midnight, the Dragon Room in Cabrini Green. Before it was torn down in 2011, Cabrini Green had a reputation for being one of the wildest neighborhoods in America. It was run by the Gangsta Disciples, who sold drugs out of the building. There were even stories about the gang putting snipers on the roof to protect the projects. D. Tay probably had no idea he was in such a wild area, but he thought no one would give him problems if they knew he was with G-Unit. That might have been true on the East Coast, but G-Unit had less influence in Chicago. 50 knew they could have issues in the city and told everyone to stay inside, but D. Tay didn't listen and got caught up in some serious drama. When D. Tay and his homie pulled up to the club, they got in without any problems. The security saw the chain and let him get in for free but not everyone in the club had the same energy. Before they went inside, D-Tay and his crew were talking to some women outside the club. D-Tay noticed that the girl he was talking to kept looking past him like there was someone coming. He turned around and saw about three or four dudes crossing the street, walking toward them. At first, nothing happened. The dudes walked right by them toward the entrance of the club, so D-Tay went right back to talking. But a few minutes later, one of the dudes came back and fired a shot at D-Tay's foot. He saw the spark and heard someone behind him say, give me that and grab at the chain from behind. D-Tay had no idea what was happening, so he grabbed onto the chain while his homie fired back. Both sides were busting shots, but then D-Tay looked up and saw the size of the gun the robber had and decided he wasn't about to die over a G-Unit chain. So, he took it off his neck and gave it to the robbers who then ran off down the street. D-Tay snuck back into the hotel room and went to sleep, but in the morning, he had to tell Young Buck what happened. Buck was pretty mad because 50 had warned them not to go out, and D-Tay wasn't even supposed to have the chain. Losing that chain made everyone in G-Unit look bad, especially if the news got out. Buck said they'd have to call 50 and let him know the chain was stolen. When 50 got on the phone, he asked to speak to D-Tay. He asked Tay if he was alright and told him that as long as he was safe, it was cool. But after that, 
Tay was kicked off the tour. 50 was chill at first because he thought his phone might be tapped and didn't want to say anything crazy, but he was furious about what happened. So, D. Tay was sent home and wasn't allowed to have any contact with Buck or the rest of G-Unit for the next few months. At the same time, Buck stayed behind in Chicago to find out who had the chain, but getting it back wasn't that easy. He ended up missing a show in Milwaukee and had to get back to the tour eventually. So, after a few days of looking for the chain, he left Chicago to meet up with the rest of G-Unit in Atlanta, but it wasn't over yet. The goons from Chicago who snatched the chain started doing interviews and told everyone what happened. They said they were mad about not being let into the club and saw d standing there with a huge chain. They knew he wasn't paying attention, so they decided to run up on him. At first, the robbers tried to sell the chain and offered to give it back for 100 grand. They got in contact with some people who knew the game and tried to work out a deal. But games people said they wanted too much money, and the deal fell apart. After that, they started dissing G-Unit and rocking the chain in videos to prove they really had it. Now the world knew about the chain snatching, so 50 had to find a way to get it back. The spinner chain was eventually returned, but everyone has a different story about what happened. According to D. Tay, a dude known as The Godfather helped set it up. The Godfather was one of the most respected gangsters in Chicago. Anything that went on in the streets had to go through him. So, The Godfather was the only one who could help get the chain back. The day after the robbery, Young Buck started going to all the radio stations in Chicago to ask who he needed to talk to about a stolen chain. Everyone told him he should talk to The Godfather. The Godfather happened to be hosting a Summer Jam concert in Chicago at the time. So, Buck pulled up and asked for his help. The Godfather agreed to make some calls and help him get it back. Then, he introduced him to a rapper named Jojo Capone. Jojo Capone is an OG from Chicago who had ties to the Gangsta Disciples. He also had a lot of connections in the music industry and worked with rappers like The Game and Dipset. The Game was already signed to G-Unit, so Jojo was willing to help him out. Young Buck knew Jojo was cool with The Game because he'd seen them together on a Smack DVD, so he thought getting the chain back would be easy, but it wasn't that simple. At first, Jojo said it would cost $20,000 to get the chain back, but while he was working out the deal, Young Buck called The Game and told him he was with Jojo trying to get the chain back. Right after Buck got off the phone, Jojo came back and told him the new price was 100 k Buck felt like he was getting played, so he decided the chain wasn't worth 100 k and left Chicago to join everyone else on tour. Jojo Capone later explained that he had nothing to do with the robbery or setting the price. He just knew some of the people involved and wanted to help G-Unit because he was friends with the gang. But Jojo started to get the vibe that Buck thought he had something to do with the chain getting snatched, then jacked up the price so he could keep more money for himself. After Buck left for Atlanta, Jojo decided to stay out of it. A few years later, the game even rapped about the situation on his legendary 50 Cent diss track, 300 Bars and Running, rapping, and you got robbed for your spinning G-Unit chain in Chicago. I called my nigga Jojo to get it back. He had the shit in his hands, and you ain't had a 10 stacks. Picture that. I thought we was G-Unit. Buck was still determined to get the chain back, so he spread word that he was looking for help. While young Buck was in Atlanta, he was kicking it with another rapper named Spider Loke, who was cool with some of his homies from Nashville. Spider Loke was a rapper from LA who had ties with Suge Knight. He had just gotten out of a deal with Death Row Records and was looking for a new opportunity. So, when Spider Loke met young Buck, he wanted to make a good impression. Buck told him all about the chain snatching incident and how he spent days in Chicago trying to get it back. Spider Loke then decided to spit a freestyle to get Buck's attention. Everyone was a little confused that he decided to rap while they were stressing about the chain. So, Spider Loke realized he needed to do more to prove himself to Buck and promised to help get his chain back. Buck mentioned seeing a bunch of people wearing made men chains while he was in Chicago. Spider Loke knew another rapper named J.O. Felony, who worked with a group called Made Men and had connections to the game and Jojo Capone. So, Spider Loke called J.O. Felony to see if he could help. J.O. put Spider Loke on the call with the game to try to work something out, but the game didn't realize they were on speakerphone. At the time, Spider Loke had no connections to G Unit, so Game had no idea Young Buck was in the room and Tony Yayo was on another line. When Spider asked him about the chain, Game didn't want to deal with it. He shocked everyone in the room when he told Spider Loke, fuck G Unit and fuck the chain. Everyone was confused because the game was still part of G Unit. Everyone thought Game would want to help get the chain back, but he clearly didn't want anything to do with it. No one knows if he was mad about the situation with Jojo Capone or if Game was already having problems with 50 by that point. But the game was not down to help get the chain back. Young Buck and Tony Yayo heard what Game said during the call with their own ears, which is what sparked the very beginning of the beef between the game and G Unit. But G Unit still didn't give up on getting the chain back. Buck got back on the phone with the Godfather, who was mad that he left Chicago without telling him. At first, the Godfather didn't want to help, but then Spider Loke got on the phone. 
Spider Loke mentioned that he was from LA, and the Godfather told him that he was friends with Suge Knight. The Godfather was trying to flex his connections, but that was exactly what Spider Loke wanted to hear. Even though he left Death Row, Spider Loke was still on good terms with Suge. So, he told the Godfather to ask Suge about him. They got off the phone, and a few hours later, the Godfather called back. He said to tell Buck he's gonna get his chain back, and he could thank Spider Loke. A week later, Young Buck introduced Spider Loke to 50 Cent in LA, and Spider Loke ended up signing a deal with G Unit a few weeks after that. Spider Loke played a big role in getting the chain back, but according to 50 Cent, Spider Loke left out a major detail in the story. According to 50, it wasn't only the Godfather that put in the call, they also got help from the Flores twins, two drug traffickers who were part of El Chapo's Sinaloa cartel. The Flores twins were two of the biggest dealers in Chicago and moved around 300 kilos of cocaine a week. They found out about the chain getting snatched after one of the robbers offered to sell it to them. But instead of buying it, they saw it as an opportunity to connect with 50 Cent. The Flores twins ordered a freeze on all drug shipments coming into Chicago until the chain was returned. So, none of the street-level dealers could get any work. The Godfather was also a major drug kingpin in Chicago, and the freeze put a lot of pressure on him to get the chain back. So, he ordered the goons who took it to hand the chain over to the Flores twins. Tony Yayo also confirmed this part of the story was true on an episode of the Drink Champs podcast. Getting the chain back turned out to be a smart move for the Flores twins. In 2008, they turned into informants after getting caught by the feds and played a big part in taking down El Chapo. They were still sentenced to 14 years, but got out in 2020. Years later, 50 decided to repay the favor and help them produce a podcast called Surviving El Chapo, the twins who brought down the drug lord. So that's the crazy story of how two members of a cartel helped G-Unit get their stolen chain back. But the craziest twist is that the chain wasn't even real. 50 spent about $300,000 on the original G-Unit spinner chain. He couldn't let anyone else wear it because he had to pay extra insurance money every time it was out of his possession. Instead, he had a dummy chain made that looked just like it. He put the original in the safe and gave Buck the dummy chain, which was worth a lot less. So the chain D-Tay was wearing the night it got stolen was actually fake. It was still a bad look to have a bunch of Chicago goons rocking a stolen G-Unit chain in interviews, so they had to get it back either way. But it's pretty wild that it took El Chapo's cartel, Suge Knight, and some of the biggest gangsters in Chicago just to return a fake G-Unit chain. 